Google I.O. is right around the corner, and if it's anything like it was last year, we should be expecting a ton of Gemini-related announcements. Personally, I'm excited as a daily user, but before we get all caught up in the craziness, let's take a deep dive into all the recent Gemini updates so when that conference does come around, you'll know what Google's been working on and be ready for what's next. Of course, 9to5Google will be on the ground at Google I.O., so subscribe to the channel if you want to stay in touch with the latest news. Also, to celebrate May the 4th, my favorite holiday, we are giving away 18 free Star Wars slash Android themed wallpapers made for 9 to 5 Google viewers, which you can get via a link in the description. We do have more wallpaper packs that are exclusive to our channel members, so consider signing up if you want to support the channel and gain access. With that out of the way, let's get into these Gemini updates, starting first with a new feature for Gemini on desktop, where Google has recently added a new shortcut to initiate prompts in Chrome. For those that didn't know, typing the at symbol in Chrome's address bar provides a shortcut for managing your browsing history, bookmarks, and open tabs, but as of April 30th, you can now quickly ask Gemini a question by typing at Gemini, then entering your prompt. This automatically opens up the Gemini webpage and begins answering your question. I would say, just make sure your browser is on the latest version so you can get the features, otherwise it's a quick, seamless way to ask for information that will take some time getting used to. We do have good news for those with older devices as Gemini support has now been extended to Android 10 and 11. Originally at launch, the Gemini mobile app was limited to Android 12 and newer, which did exclude a lot of users, so this certainly is a welcome change. To install Gemini on Android 10, just make sure you have the latest version of the Google search app, then download the Gemini app from the Play Store as well. I did test this on my good old essential phone running on Android 10, and while the experience might be slightly slower than a modern device, the core functionality is here with the option to replace with Google Assistant if you so choose. Personally, I love that you don't need the latest hardware to have access, and to me, the more users that can have access to Gemini, the better. Finally, for our last general update, the Gemini mobile app has added support for more languages, including Spanish, French, Portuguese, Chinese, Italian, and German, while also expanding app availability to all countries Gemini is currently supported in, except for the UK, EU, and Switzerland. That said, we do have a ton of upcoming features and changes on the horizon as well. In early April, Google hosted their annual Cloud Next conference that highlighted advancements in their cloud services and technologies with some Gemini info sprinkled in. Some key announcements from the conference include the addition of voice prompting and voice input for the Help Me Write feature on mobile, and we're also getting an instant polish feature that will convert rough notes into a complete email with one click, both of which will be available to Gemini Enterprise and business customers, as well as Google One AI Premium subscribers. Google Chat also got a brief mention as well as they're getting Gemini integration that should allow users to summarize conversations and ask detailed questions about that conversation. And finally, Google Meet is getting a Translate For Me feature to automatically detect and translate captions during a video call. In other news, Google has confirmed during the Cloud Next conference that OnePlus and Oppo will add the Gemini large language model to their devices in 2024. During the event, it was shown that some features include news and audio summaries, an AI toolbox with no specifics on what that actually is, and more, which is pretty much in line with how other manufacturers like Samsung have done it so far. As we know, Gemini powers summarization in Samsung Notes and Voice Recorder, as well as Magic Compose in the keyboard, so I'm expecting a similar implementation from OnePlus. So far, we don't have a dedicated time frame besides later this year, but we do expect to see much more in the coming months. Either way, it's nice to see OnePlus jumping into the AI world with this announcement, plus the recent implementation of their own AI magic erasure tool, it seems like they're beginning to finally catch up. And in our last story for upcoming features, it seems like Google will have Gemini Nano 2 available in time for the Galaxy S25 series based on a report from Daum Herald Economy. Hard to say what this means since information about Gemini Nano 2 is basically non-existent at this point, and the report gives no mention on what we may see. Although, if I had to speculate, I think we can expect the usual improvements for tech as a whole, maybe faster processing times, more accurate results, making it accessible to more users, or possibly be more personalized. It is worth noting that same report does say Samsung is aiming to double staff working on their own Exynos AI, so right now it's unclear if the S25 series will have Gemini, Exynos AI, or maybe a mix of the two, but more competition in the space is always welcome, so I'm excited to see how this plays out.
To close out this video, I wanted to cover some general news that you should at least be aware of if you're deep into the world of Gemini. For those that are trying to improve their AI prompts, Google did release a free to download prompting guide. It is specifically meant for Gemini in workspace apps like Gmail or Docs, but I'm sure it could apply to those wanting to maximize their usage in general. The guide is a great resource with tips showcasing best practices, how you can generate specific results with certain prompts, showing how to ask for feedback or get more creative answers. Basically, it helps you work a little smarter when using Gemini and should help make it more likely to get the output you're looking for. I took a look at the guide and I think it's worth a read regardless of whatever AI chatbot you use. There's techniques to help you get better answers faster, there's a ton of ideas showing you different ways to use Gemini, so if you're feeling a bit stuck, this is a great place to start. This resource can help a lot as it's packed with information to streamline your workflow or get more creative and if you're interested, there will be a link in the description. Lastly, in our final piece of general Gemini news, Google's Android Studio development tool got a big upgrade to their AI-powered coding assistant. For those who don't know, Google launched an experimental program called Studio Bot in May 2023 that was supposed to help developers generate code, answer questions about Android development, and help debug app issues. As of April 8th, Google has upgraded the assistant with the more powerful Gemini 1.0 Pro model that should result in better response quality, offer contextual code suggestions, and the upgrade features templates to help developers get started. Obviously, I'm not a software engineer, so I can't say for certain how useful this change is for developers, but we can speculate it should take some weight off the development process to allow for coders to focus on higher level features. And overall, that's been all the major Gemini developments as of late, all wrapped up into one easy to understand video. Of course, I don't think this is nearly the end as Google I.O. is right around the corner. If you tuned in last year, then you know Google spent a significant amount of time on AI and and announced dozens of AI focused features in every single product category. And knowing how hard they've been pushing this year, I have a strong feeling we can expect an equal level of attention at this upcoming conference. As I said earlier, 9to5 Google will be there at Google I.O. So if there's anything specific you want us to cover or take a look at, leave a comment and let us know. But in the meantime, I'm getting out of here. Before I go, I just wanted to say a huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Your support means a lot to me and Damien as we keep working very very hard to make the best Android content we possibly can. So seriously, thank you so much for helping us grow. More content is definitely on the way. And with that said, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.